As Nelson Mandela himself will always say that it was always a collective, you know, that struggle against apartheid. We also need to understand the role of people who were not uh, in leadership, the rank and file, I mean, uh, the laborers, the workers, you know, the role that they played, uh, the cultural activists, people who sang, poets and all that, because they also played an important role so that, so that the international community would know what was happening in South Africa. I mean, the ANC, for example, um, had the, a group called uh, Amandla uh, Cultural Ensemble, uh, which told the, told the world, you know, told the world, and they performed um, in different countries, music, plays, poetry, and, um, and then you also have other cultural activists who were painters, sculptors, and all that. So, you know, with, with, with the opposition to apartheid, some people would easily understand the speeches by the leaders, Oliver Tambo and others uh, who went around the world uh, 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 informing the world about the, the brutal system of apartheid. But some people, and I think many, uh, I would emphasize that it was through music, it was through poetry that they would easily grasp what was happening inside the country. Uh, other than that, I mean, they wouldn't be in, have, been, have been in a position to support the anti-apartheid uh, movement throughout the world. So I think uh, uh, culture, uh, cultural activism also played an important role uh, in the demise of uh, apartheid. Music was segregated. I mean, apartheid affected every life in South Africa. Every life, even even work. I mean, uh, we were not allowed to perform at uh, some of the best venues in in um, in town. And uh, I mean, at some stage, we had performed at a nightclub in Johannesburg, in town, and we were not allowed to interact with the audience. We were such a good band that the nightclubs would invite us, but they were solely for white people. And uh, at nightclub in Glen Hazel, we were only allowed to leave after everybody had left. And um, one of the nights, and after, I think it was very early hours of the morning when we had to leave, we were confronted by police, you know, who asked us what we were doing in town at that time. And when we told them that we we're a band, this guy could not believe. And I mean, he, he was disdainful, you know, I mean, the way he looked at us. And for a moment, he said to me, you can't tell me you're a band. For me, you all look like monkeys, nothing else. I mean, <laughs> that's, but for us, it was fun because we understood the, the psychology that he was trying to, and we were capable to deal with that stuff because of our educational background. And uh, we laughed about it. And it was a very difficult uh, space to make music. And uh, of course, the townships were incredible. We had great support from our people. Of course, uh, it became a very difficult existence for us um, when we started then going into other different countries and so on. Especially when we got to Botswana, where we suddenly realized, you know, it's funny because people, you know, mixed, people of all races mixed in Botswana. And we come into our concert, there was no issue. It was no, it made no difference to those people who were deaf, deaf, dancing to our music. And of course, that ignited our political consciousness. You know, that ignited our political call to understand why is it that it's different in South Africa as well as the other countries like Lesotho, Botswana and Swaziland, we could play to all audiences. That made us self-conscious and uh, we started pursuing a different approach to music, which we felt we could use as a vehicle to express our political uh, alliance. Yeah. <laughs>